or when it comes to our economy, we may not be out of the woods yet. But the path to recovery is certainly pointing towards Oklahoma's booming energy sector. That was the conclusion of several economists gathered at the Oklahoma Economic Outlook Conference. And our Courtney Dioff was there and joins me now here in studio. Well, Rob, by nearly all accounts, Oklahoma's increasingly robust economy should continue to grow this year, thanks in great part to the strengths of our oil and gas sector. Oklahoma's economy is looking up. Well, we're certainly heading in the right direction. Uh, I don't think we're where we want to be. We're not back to pre-recession levels, but uh, revenues are coming in well, whether it's income, sales, uh, gross production. Uh, most of our uh, revenues are up, and they're up in a pretty significant way. State Treasurer Ken Miller says it can all be attributed to one thing. We have about a $150 billion economy uh, in the state of Oklahoma, and we can tie about $50 billion of that uh, back to the oil and gas industry. So it's a huge driver which is certainly good news for Oklahoma's economy. It's vital in, uh, in Oklahoma. It, uh, the sector now accounts for almost as large of a share of GDP and personal income as it did in the late 70s, early 80s, um, which as long as prices stay high, that's an outstanding thing. Energy is the one that tends to distinguish Oklahoma from the average across the nation. In many respects, we follow the nation in many of the manufacturing trends and other trends but it's energy that often gives us that di divergence from the rest of the country. The location of drilling rigs across the country. Chad Wilkerson with the Federal Reserve Our Bank and Oklahoma State Economics Professor uh, Dan Rickman were part of the 2012 Oklahoma Economic Outlook Conference in Oklahoma City and say while state revenues from oil and gas are projected to level off in 2012, a rebound in the global economy could push prices even higher in 2013. The only state I think you could say that's in better shape than Oklahoma right now would be North Dakota, uh, which has just seen the huge boom in oil and gas activity. But other than that, Oklahoma is up pretty high. But such highs do run a risk. High oil prices combined with high agricultural price drove rural land values up by 25 percent last year. And while oil prices remain strong, Commodity prices have began to weaken. Kim Anderson with Oklahoma State University. United Nations reported that food prices have come down every month for the last five months. Uh, you look at uh, the com major commodity prices in the United States, cattle, corn, wheat, soybeans, those prices have, have declined since uh, January of 2011. The economic impact of the uh, lower farm prices will have a negative impact on farm income, which will have a negative impact on the economy. Which could burst Oklahoma's rising land bubble. And that uh, is probably a top on the radar screen of risk to our region, you know, that aren't related to national uh, risks. Uh, commodity prices have increased a lot, farm incomes have been strong, but the, the degree to which uh, prices have increased, I think, uh, has us a bit worried. You know, what, what has us not as worried perhaps as we were about the, you know, the housing bubble uh, a few uh, years ago is that much less of the farmland purchases are financed by debt, a uh, significant amount financed by cash or by uh, other equity. Uh, so if there were, you know, some come down in prices, it wouldn't be as big of a hit on, on either the, the farmers themselves or on the banks that finance them. And while a hot energy-driven economy does pose some risks, it's a problem Oklahoma State Treasurer says he is willing to face. It's really the driver of our economy. Uh, we have about uh, one-third of our economy can be tied back to the energy industry. Uh, we, whether it's natural gas or whether it's um, um, oil, it's, it's big. But despite continued positive revenue reports, state officials are predicting a relatively flat budget for the coming fiscal year because of the loss of one-time revenues that were used to close this year's budget gap of about $500 million. Lawmakers also will be without an estimated $70 million in lost revenue from the state's income tax, which drops for the 2012 tax year from 5.5% to 5.25 percent. So it certainly sounds like there's going to be some belt tightening in state government just because of those those revenue numbers. But 
I want to ask you about the jobless rate. We've seen a slight uptick in unemployment recently. We have, Rob, but economists say those numbers might be misleading, and that's because of two things. The first is people that had just given up looking for jobs are once again starting to go out and look for jobs. And people are relatively positive and are quitting their jobs and going out and looking for even better ones. Final question to you. Is there anything out there on the horizon that worries the economists that you talk to? There certainly is, Rob. While it may seem like a long ways away, the economic turmoil in Europe poses a huge threat to the global economy, which in turn poses a threat to the oil sector, which in turn poses a threat to this state's economy and our rapid rise from recession. All right. Nice report. Thank you, Courtney.